Decades from now, the collapse of Republicans' campaign to repeal the Affordable Care Act ACA may be seen as the moment America finalized its commitment to health care for all. Democrats should anti-risk this historic victory by rubbing it in. Some want to seize this moment to press for single-payer. Others secretly hope Republican stubbornness will stymie tweaks to Obamacare's individual markets, sowing chaos they can blame on the GOP. President Trump's threats to implode these markets by ending the ACA subsidies to insurers for low-income subscribers offer temptation along these lines. But by resisting it, congressional Democrats can lock in the ACA's main achievement, making coverage for all the starting premise for political contests over health care. The sudden bloom of health policy bipartisanship in the House and Senate offers a singular opportunity. With Majority Leader Mitch McConnell Mitch McConnell exclusive Trump allies rally around Sen. Flake's primary challenger GOP senators rally to McConnell's defense amid Trump attacks Flake voices support for McConnell amid Trump attacks Mare's tacit agreement, Sen's. Lamar Alexander Lamar Alexander insurers cite uncertainty in filing Obamacare rate hikes McConnell open to bipartisan deal on health insurance payments 5 tough decisions for the GOP on health care more are 10, and Patty Murray Patty Murray McConnell open to bipartisan deal on health insurance payments GOP Senator Trump may have been only one who did and realize health care complexity overnight health care GOP states move to cut Medicaid Senate passes key FDA funding Bill Mordwash, the Senate Health Committee's chair and ranking minority member are crafting legislation that would keep Trump from cutting off the ACA's insurer subsidies, which pay for reduced medical cost sharing for low-income insureds. The deal in play would secure these subsidies in exchange for state flexibility to let health plans exclude services that the ACA requires. For health policy progressives, flexibility is a foul word, code for carte blanche to cut services they see as vital. They ought to get over this. States can be given room to relax mandates so long as insurers cover the preventive, therapeutic, and supportive services widely understood to constitute decent medical care. Heaven and hell, of course, lurk in the details, but here are some simple markers bare bones health plans that appeal selectively to people unlikely to need pricey care should be off limits because they wreak havoc on the cost spreading needed to make insurance markets work all evidence based, cost effective care should be covered and states should be free to permit plans to exclude services that pursue culturally contested purposes beyond the traditional therapeutic realm. I wince at the thought of allowing insurers to exclude, say, gender reassignment or confirmation surgery even the name is contested or laterum abortion. But what's mandated in Massachusetts needn't be the same in Mississippi a dose of cultural federalism could help to firm up our fractious country's commitment to decent health care for all. So could incorporation of free market conservatives health policy favorite, expanded medical savings accounts MSAs. The progressive rep against MSAs is their reverse Robin Hood regressivity, their tax-exempt status delivers greater benefits to Americans in higher tax brackets. But the easy fix for this is to fund low-income Americans' MSAs via tax credits. One could go further, by allowing people to purchase insurance on the individual market, using pre-tax, MSA dollars, and even by creating MSAs as a default for all taxpayers, with freedom to opt out. Supporters of single-payer, meanwhile, ought to press now for the so-called public option, the opportunity to buy into Medicare or a similarly structured public plan via the insurance exchanges. Once a core feature of the Obama campaign proposal that became the ACA, the public option was bargained a way to bring powerful healthcare industry stakeholders on board. An affordable public plan would both heighten competition on the exchanges and safeguard Americans against private insurers' departure from them. Its pro-competitive, cost-containing power would be maximized were it available nationally, but the public option could be part of a bipartisan suite of state flexibilities. Healthcare providers and insurers will surely resist fearing the public plan's purchasing power and pricing clout. Its prospects for inclusion in a package of ACABUG fixes and tweaks this fall are poor. But putting it on the table now would restore it to the public agenda as the next election cycle looms, positioning Democrats as proponents of a pragmatic, longer-term insurance market fix. Such a fix will be necessary to secure America's new commitment to decent health care for all. So will continued resistance to efforts to weaken Medicaid as a vehicle for access to mainstream care. Health policy progressives should treat this summer's stunning victory as an opportunity to lock in this national commitment long term, by shoring up the ACA's market-centered design rather than overplaying their hand. M. Greg Blosh, M.D., J.D., at Greg Blosh, is professor of law at Georgetown University and author of The Hippocratic Myth.
He helped to develop President Obama's 2008 campaign health care reform plan and advised the 20,080,2009 presidential transition. The views expressed by contributors are their own and not the views of the Hill.